I think most people watching this video already know how to get audio from their Qwit Mobile out of their phone device or out of their iPad device or tablet device and into their DJ setup. If you don't know how to do it, I'm going to explain that real quick. It's simple. You need an eighth inch plug to an RCA cable. You plug that out of your iPad or phone device and you plug this end into the back of your mixer or your DJ setup and it's that simple. One thing about this, you're relying completely on the quality of the sound card built into your device to get that audio. Some of us are looking for studio quality audio. And there's a way to get that out of your mobile device as well. Most people don't realize that the same sound card that you plug into your computer, as long as it is class compliant, you can use the same sound card to get audio out of your mobile device and into your DJ setup. And in this video today, it's exactly what I'm going to show you how to do. Here's an example of two different class compliant sound cards that we can use to run audio from our mobile device. This one is self-powered, which means it comes with a power plug. You plug that into an AC outlet, and that's what draws the power to power the device. This one is bus powered, which means when you plug the USB into your computer, it's drawing the power directly from your computer in order to run a device. We can use both of these because they're both class compliant. The only difference is, is that with a mobile device, it does not generate enough power to run a bus powered sound card. So we have to make one extra step when we use this sound card is we have to get a self powered hub. This plugs directly in the outlet. We can plug the sound card into the hub and the hub into our mobile device. And that's how the hub will now generate enough power to run the sound card. Both of these are class compliant. They'll both work with your mobile device. By the time now, you've probably heard me say class compliant a million times, and you're probably wondering to yourself, what exactly is class compliant sound card? And what's the difference between a regular sound card and a class compliant sound card? A regular sound card needs drivers installed into the computer in order for it to operate. A class compliant sound card means it's simply plug and play. You cannot install drivers into your mobile device, your iPad, your Android phone. So therefore you need a sound card that's just plug and play. That's why I keep saying you need a class compliant sound card. In the descriptions when you order a sound card, it'll let you know whether it's class compliant or not. The last step after that you need to be able to plug a regular sound card like a computer, external sound card, USB sound card into your Android or your iPad is you need this adapter or this adapter. This is for iDevices, iPads, iPhones. It's a lightning cable to a USB. It also has an extra lightning plug because when this is plugged in, you can't power your phone or your iPad, but you can power, you can plug the power into the extra slot and that will power the iPad while the USB is plugged in. Therefore, you're not running off a of battery. Uh, you could use just a lightning to USB, but then you might run out of battery power. This gives you the option to power it at the same time. And for Androids, the newer Androids, they use USB-C to USB, you need that adapter, or the older ones need mini USB to USB, but you need something similar. This one actually has an HDMI out too. We don't really need that. It just happened to come with it, but it also has a place to plug in your power. That way you can power your tablet or your Android phone while you're running Qit to your sound card. It's that simple. Here's the setup using a self-powered sound card. First of all, you have the sound card. We're looking at the back of the sound card. You have it plugged in, plugged in the power outlet. That's what's running the sound card. USB from the sound card goes into your adapter and then into your mobile device. If you want to power the mobile device, you plug the power for the mobile device also into the adapter. Right now you can see we're not plugged in, we're running just off a of battery, but if you don't want to run off battery, you can plug in and you can also have your mobile device charging at the same time. The last step is you want the output audio from the sound card going into your board and then you can just play sound. And here's how we set up a bus powered sound card. Here we have the back of the sound card again, because that's obviously where we plug everything in. I want you to see that. Um, there's one extra step involved here. We need a powered hub in order to power the bus powered sound card because it doesn't have its own power supply. So the only difference is you plug from the sound card, USB into the self powered hub. Again, that generates power for the sound card. This is plugged in the power that's powering the USB hub. Then from the hub, you plug the hub into your adapter, your adapter into your device. This time we actually have the device plugged in, so we're also powering the device. And the last step is the audio cables from the audio out of the sound card into your board. And then again, we got sound. 
That's it. Now you're ready to play audio out of your mobile device with studio quality sound. Remember to like this video, and if you've got questions or comments, remember to leave them in the comment section below.